This is Twit. Well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, speaking of not winning, John Giandrea has finally uh, left the building. Um, this is retired. A, retired. Yeah. Was he fired? Was he retired? I think I mean, people can always come out of retirement. Retired just means I'm going to take some time off and think about things for a while. Yeah. He, or there's yeah. a clause in his contract that allows him yeah. to, to yeah. put in for retirement at a certain point. It is December in 1st, way. which seems like a... No, he's he apparently retiring next spring, which ah. again leads to a suggestion that maybe there's some contractual kind of like obligation yeah. here. It feels like this is, um, you know, you get you, you increasingly get things taken away from you until you're it's very clear that you're not going anywhere but um probably the there's an understanding that you know he doesn't have they're not going to fire him they yeah. know what his deal is he's going to just kind of fade away and uh and that saves face for apple and it saves face a little bit for him and he can go on to something else or just take the money and run yes yeah, the, the, uh, give us the uh, before we go too much farther down this uh give us the the uh, cv of mr uh, john andrea well, he was he was the head head of an AI project, uh, you know, AI was, division he, at Google, and he was he, he a big was, hire, a big get yeah. for Apple. What, he, four he, years he, ago. he was the, he was the head of AI at Google, and then when Google acquired DeepMind, they so. they suddenly had two heads of AI, and they decided to pick the t turn DeepMind into Google DeepMind, and suddenly Joe Andrea becomes became superfluous to Google's needs, and therefore a really really quick decision. He Easy ran search too, to though, it. for a while. There was a point, point in time where he ran search for Google. Yeah, and then, and then he went to Apple. And he was it was his move to Apple was highly heralded. Like, we've got him. We got the big yeah. fish. This is going to change everything. Yeah. A guy yeah. with a lot of credibility coming from Google, which is a company with a lot of credibility, especially when it came to AI stuff at, yeah. in that era, especially. And you know, it, it didn't go well, and we don't know the reasons. I think that there are feelings on both sides that Apple's corporate culture maybe didn't match with, with what they were trying to do. I, if I had to, yeah. look, if I had to de deconstruct this as somebody who was not involved, I would say my guess is Apple's corporate culture is not a good fit for people who think in a more, uh, you know, we're hacking on AI development way and let's see what happens next. And now here's a new product release three weeks later. Apple is very product release focused on a, you know, hardware side and a, and a software side on a release cycle. And I wonder if the we're messing around here learning things about AI, and I don't mean lazily, I mean like intensely, but the way the AI world is going, I wonder if it didn't fit it didn't mesh and and certainly the moment of truth was when apple promised a lot of things for ai and then failed to deliver them and and i got the sense from that that you there was really a culture clash where yeah. apple was like we need a product and we need to ship it and they're like well you know it, it'll be you know you didn't like this one and we'll, we're working on it and like that's just it's just a bad fit and i think that that more than anything else is the truth here is that it's not about who did who wrong or even the right way to do it it's more like there's the way ai development culture runs and there's the way apple product development culture runs and they don't seem to mesh very well yeah especially the, there can be I, I i consistently love the differences between apple and google again yin and yang they're not right and wrong they are opposites that kind of that often define each other. And one of them is that Google still has its cultural legacy as we are a university that does all kinds of projects and all kinds of all kinds of research that we don't know how we're going to productize this yet. But it's interesting and we're hiring the right people to basically start with nothing and an interesting idea and then see if it see if it can make make money before it costs us too much money and that is absolutely not apple's culture yeah uh, to, again, again that's not that's not right or wrong but apple is not the company that says and you know what this is kind of an interesting idea let's play with it for a while and see how it develops so it's, it can be hard for, i can imagine it being very very hard for someone who was the head of ai at google without the if he did not have the ability to say no here is the roadmap that we're going to follow and here's how we're going to follow it not necessarily having the ability to simply say here's the stuff that we're going to ship here's the stuff that we're going to develop and here's the roadmap that i'm setting for everybody yeah it's not even about 
innovation so much as it is about how you get from point A to point B. Yeah. And and like you said, Andy, there's a lot of, I, I'd say, a little bit more academic, but also just a little more in the spirit of, of some of these AI startups where it's like, let's see where this takes us. Let's yeah. try a bunch of stuff. And Apple's innovation is spurred by a goal toward a product that has deliverables and that has a purpose. And again, I think you can look at both of those and see the advantages of both. And it's clear that Apple has has missed the boat on development of its own AI models internally. I think we all agree about that. We can debate like whether it matters and how much it matters and all of those things. But I think that the truth is that that the way they approach product release and software features even is not necessarily the same approach as a lot of people in the AI space culturally. And that, you know, that is one of the reasons I think that there's a disconnect there that leads to something like that Apple intelligence announcement where there was clearly a disconnect internally. I think the challenge is that, you know, I think when you, uh, for a lot of companies, the move fast, break things kind of approach to thing to, to a process is the only way to break through on some, some of these areas. And I think even Apple, in the early days of rip mix burn, <laughs> you know, was a little bit like, you know, pushing the outer en envelope. Um, but I think that their, you know, resistance to, to that um, now for obvious reasons makes it hard. It, you can see, the, as, as, as Jason said, there's an advantage to saying we're going to build a long pipeline and just slowly build the infrastructure and move into that, into that area. And it's just kind of a glacial push. Whereas with, you know, um, when you do the move fast and break things, you end up with a lot of spaghetti code. You end up with a lot of security issues. You end up with a lot of breaking a bunch of rules that, you know, become problematic. Um, but you also get to break a bunch of ground. And, you know, and, and I think that that's, I think in Google, I think in, in the extremes of Apple and Facebook, I think Google's kind of in the middle of that. Yeah. And in addition to everything else, remember that Google has always been foundationally a services company, which means that they're pushing electrons from the one of the biggest compute resource maps internationally that exists, whereas Apple is a hardware company. So it's harder to simply green light, hey, here's a software project that all, all we have to that all we have to do is allocate resources for it and we'll run it and just deploy this as a service. Whereas the question at Apple is always going to be, how will this help us to sell more iPhones? How will this help us to sell more Apple watches? And again, not right or wrong. It's just simply the way that Apple operates versus Google. Google also culturally, I would say, is not I mean, again, trying to be really fair here, because I use lots of Google, Google services too. Google is kind of not a product company. It's more like it's a concept company and products emerge and escape. And <laughs> some of them work and some of them don't and are killed. But it's kind of a byproduct of Googlers just doing their thing. And, and you know, any interaction I've had with them has very much been like super nerdy, let's try it, whatever. And then at some point, if there's money to be made, the suits rush in and everything gets contracted and uh, the money gets carved out and all of that. But And I think that's a, a cool culture to have in a lot of ways to, because you can do a lot of innovative things. But it does lead, like, I'll give you an example. I needed to build some AI integration into a workflow of mine, a cloud workflow of mine. I was automating it using, it's just a whole bunch of different pieces in the cloud. There's a Google sheet involved. I, I need to post to Discord. I'm going through a web service to do it. And I had this moment where I'm like, you know, an LLM would be great here. I would really like to process a big chunk of text and summarize it and categorize it before I pass it on to my Discord. Okay, to set that up in Google AI, you have to go to Google Cloud and turn things on. You have to go to Google AI and turn things on. You have to build a product, a project that generates a page with like a sidebar full of code files and all this stuff in order to, and this is all based on the documentation, in order to back out and get an API key and all of that. And uh, uh, to use OpenAI, you go to the OpenAI uh, API page and uh, make an API key. And that's it. And I thought, that's a great example of a cultural difference that open AI is like, what people want to build on our stuff, we'll charge them this, here are the rates, here are the models, here's your API key. Google's like, great, we have a whole system where we have a code builder and a, and, 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 and our, our cloud system is tied into our, yeah. our development system and it's all interacted with your, your, with your Google Drive. And like, if you're in there and you think like Google, it actually is pretty awesome. But for me, I was like, forget that, I'm just going to get the open, I'm going to use OpenAI, yeah. because OpenAI has productized that API in a way where Google's like, 
whatever, you know, just mess around. And and that that the and Apple is very similarly very product focused in a way that that mindset. Uh, it's just different. It, it, not right or wrong, even. It's just yeah. different, and they live, lead to different outcomes. But it's very hard to get the cats and the dogs to live together. Right. Yeah, I, I, th I think that reflects Google's ambitions versus OpenAI's ambitions, where. OpenAI is hands down the most popular chatbot on the planet. It is. It basically won the let's Google this, the the verb the verb war for ch for chatbots. Oh, I'm I'm using I'm using uh, ChatGPT for this, even if you're not necessarily using ChatGPT for this. So they're very much a user oriented sort of service. Whereas Google, their ambitions are we want if anybody anywhere in the world wants to develop anything involving AI on any platform and on as an international service, as something for your small business or something that runs on a, on a device, we want to be your go-to shop to actually make that happen. And so they're not really optimized towards uh, individual users. So it's it's nice that there's so many people fighting this out. I'm really I'm really keen to see where Gian Grev winds up next because there's no way that that he did not fail out of Apple. He I think it's pretty much understood that. It was just an incompatibility problem, or they 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 ran they ran a uh, they, they they ran a certain set of plays that did not pan out, and now they need to they, they need a new defensive coach. Coach, I'm making stuff up because I don't know football, but there's 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 no way that he's not landing on his feet and maybe doing something more in more inventive, more innovative, and not quite so demanding of results in six weeks. Nerd, uh, nerds, nerds are going to hate me, but I'm going to use a I will use that football metaphor, which is the 49ers hired a defensive coordinator when their DC got got hired away and th and the guy was like i use a different style of defense and they're like no 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 it'll be fine you'll come in and you'll coach our different style of defense and at the end of the year they're both like bye see ya yeah, uh, yeah, and it wasn't so even like you're not a bad coach but like you're not doing what we what we do here and we're not going to let you do what you want because we have our goals here and i mean it, it happens yeah. all the time it's okay yeah. i don't I, I i bet you john g and andrea goes somewhere interesting after this but he will have cashed in a lot of money and, from apple and, in the meantime and he's got a long time to think about it like it's it's not like he has to like oh i gotta go find another job i mean he can mm -hmm. take a year there's or also a larger trend uh, in ai that's going on which is that the senior people in ai are kind of up and out are moving up and out i think uh, and I, I feel like it's uh, the, the, the AI movement is being driven by very young. New, I think I think part people. of the problem is is that they that it's moving so fast that if yeah. you were in it for ten years, you may I, not really understand what's happening next. Like school. you, yeah. it's like oh, uh, you know, like that's I didn't because it's and what's incredible is just how not how how far it's evolving, but how how quickly it's changing. Yes. You know, and and we all know that we're not even close to what the final landing place is going to be. You know, like all the stuff that we're doing right now is probably, probably all of it will get thrown away in the next three to five years. Hey, I hope you've enjoyed this highlight from Mac Break Weekly. If you want to see the whole show, where every Tuesday you can watch us live right here on YouTube, or just click the link below and download an episode or subscribe if you really like it. What is it the kids say? Oh, yeah, like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. <laughs>